Hello, I'm Jerry Taylor, co-chair of the ACHA COVID-19 Task Force and former associate dean and director of the Health Center at Bentley University in Waltham, Mass. Today, we're discussing the ACHA COVID-19 Task Force updated guidelines for the fall of 2022. I'm here with Catherine Ibelke, member of our COVID-19 Task Force and travel medicine specialist from the uh, Montana State University in Bozeman, Montana. She wrote the guidelines on travel. Catherine, thank you so much for joining us today. Would you go over a few of the most important points from those guidelines on, on international Hi, Jerry. travel? Thank you so much for doing this and for this invitation. And uh, in the guidelines for international travel, with specific regard to COVID-19, um, and the evolution of the pandemic, there are a few things that have always been part of good practices in IHE travel medicine that have become even more significant um, with the advent of the pandemic. And um, one of the most important aspects of this is travelers should be well-informed, well-prepared, and well-supported before, during, and after travel. And that, of course, is a huge overarching point. But the idea of knowing resources, knowing what applies to each traveler in terms of COVID restrictions um, in every country, in their destination itinerary, but also upon their return to the United States, is extremely important. Another important point is recognizing that the only real constant in international travel anymore is the possibility for unexpected changes. And staying well aware of those and on top of them is extremely important. Giving our travelers the resources to do that is very important. Some of the most significant ones of those are listed in our resource slide following this, as well as in our four sets of guidelines um, from ACHA regarding COVID. One of the most important things is good connections with the university at multiple levels. So a campus-wide group that oversees international travel matters can be incredibly helpful with this, both in terms of preparation, but also in terms of trip support and support after travel. Another important aspect of involving other parts of the university in addition to the Student Health Center includes adequate insurance, which does not include any pandemic exclusions, support while traveling, support if unexpected return is needed due to COVID illness or to newly imposed travel restrictions, um, either at the destination or at home, and a multitude of other concerns. We want to also pay special attention to not just physical health concerns related to the COVID pandemic, but mental health concerns, both um, prior, during, and post-travel, and make sure that those support services are well known to travelers and available and well supported. Another important point is that we can get a lot of excellent information regarding the ever-changing situations in the destinations for our travelers from the U.S. embassies at their destinations. These are always an excellent source of support and very complete information is available at the Department of State website, which is also referenced here. Um, the one uh, really important part that overarches everything is the importance of good communication, both um, to the traveler and from the traveler being well supported and knowing who to contact in case they have questions or issues and knowing where to look for guidance um, is probably at the heart of any healthy and safe international travel. Catherine, I have one question for you. Um, what if somebody gets sick when they are abroad? What, what should they do? What would you recommend? Thanks, Jerry. I think that there are a number of things to keep in mind, um, just as in the basics of international travel, um, knowing where support is available medically, and that can start with your insurance coverage. There are often lists and contacts available through insurance coverage. Another important 
resource is the U.S. Embassy in your destination country. They often maintain lists of English-speaking healthcare providers, although they're not endorsements, they are good contacts. And there are also the International Society of Travel Medicine has an ongoing list of international travel clinics that is accessible to the public. Um, and I, I did forget completely to mention a really important uh, point previously, which is for us to all keep in mind that the pandemic still is with us. Um, it presents ongoing risks and ongoing potential travel concerns. And keeping in mind the importance of personal protective equipment, especially um, very um, diligent use of masks, um, including potentially in crowded outdoor situations where transmission of the newer variants is possible, is also a very important thing to keep in mind, including upon departure from the United States, where we have no longer got requirements in place for masking. And that can often be a high point of risk in, a, in our international travelers um, travel. So thank yeah. you so much, Catherine, yeah. for sharing your expertise and this valuable perspective. And many thanks to our audience for watching our video. If you have not accessed the IPS updated fall guidelines, you can find them and other resources on the ACHA website. If you have specific questions, email us at contact at ACHA.org. And if you would like to join the discussion on this and other COVID-related issues, go to ACHA Connect. Finally, Catherine has included some very helpful links below in the text below the video. Um, and I thank you once again for joining us today. Thank you so much for the invitation, Jerry. Take care. You're welcome. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you.